So compression in guitars is usually not the sexiest of topics. You don't necessarily click on a video to see somebody shredding with a compressor. But that's not what today's video is about. I'm actually gonna take you through a really cool compressor and teach you not only how to use it, but some of the ways that it can enhance your overall guitar tone. So we're gonna check out the Universal Audio Max pedal today. This is not only a preamp, but a dual compressor in one box. So you're gonna get two compressors in this box and I'll walk you through how to use them and how to maybe best apply them to your situation. But there's also a preamp built into this that is pulled from their classic 610 tube preamp design. The combination of that preamp and these compressors built in kind of give you like a channel strip in your guitar signal chain and that's going to really enhance your tone in ways that you might not expect. So we're going to play a track using the max on all of the guitar parts and the bass part. And speaking of bass, I actually recruited my friend Pete Sternberg from the Grammy award-winning band Brothers Osborne to play bass on this track. I'm going to talk to him a little bit about bass and compressors and we should have a good time just kind of diving through a topic that's not always the super sexy one for guitar players. The track's going to be downloadable as well as links to all of the stuff that we're going to talk about. We'll use the Max and the Dream pedal from Universal Audio for our amplifier. I'm also going to give you guys a 40% off discount this weekend on my most popular course, the Arpeggio Handbook for Blues Guitar. It's actually an ebook that teaches you dominant seven arpeggios all over the guitar. You can use them for all different kinds of music, and the follow-up is going to be coming out real soon. So check that out in the links below. So let's hear the track using Max. Again, I used it for all of the guitar sounds. I also used the Universal Audio Dream Pedal for my amp modeling, and Pete played through this as well for his bass tones. All right, let's check it out. So let's dive into the Max. We'll look at the controls. I'll talk you through some settings. We'll talk even later about how I got some sounds for the track you heard. But I want to tell you first that I'm playing a Sire S7 uh, HSS style guitar. I thought we could get a lot of different tones with this instrument. And we're going to go right into Max. It's bypassed right now. We're going into Dream. And Dream is Universal Audio's recreation of the mid-60s Fender era amplifiers. Great reverb on board. Um, there's some mods in that pedal because those amps were modded quite often. Uh, and it's got this that great rich Fender sound. <laughs> So no real amplifier in the room, just pedals. That's all we're doing. Amp modeler and then a compressor, which we're going to kick on. So the big red knob here is important because that's the 610 preamp that Universal Audio makes. That's a legendary preamp that they have in old recording desks. Now they have it in outboard gear and in plug-in form. And it adds some, some tube warmth to our signal. And it's a, a pretty you know legendary Universal Audio design. As we roll through, we have compressor, compressor, compression. Uh, output control, because when you add compression, you usually have to add extra output because the sound's getting pushed down, so you have to bring it back up to a level that is comfortable for you. Uh, we have attack and release times that will apply to certain compressors in the pedal, and then a ratio knob, which will also apply to certain ones as well. In the middle here, we have this comp select. Because there's two compressors in this pedal, we can choose which one we're dialing in at any particular time. You want to be careful of that and make sure you know which one you're on before you go dialing knobs. I made that mistake a few times. And each side, one and two, has the comp select, either the Dyna style, the LA-2A style, or the 1176 style. So let's start here with the Dyna comp. Now the Dyna comp is similar to the MXR Dyna comp pedal. I guess they figured, let's add that into a full-fledged guitar compressor pedal, because that's what a lot of people are, you know, familiar with. So if I, if I kick it in, I'm going to play something. <laughs> Now 
Now I don't have it too aggressively compressing. It's pretty light because I'm not a fan of a lot of Dynacomp compression that squeezes pretty quickly. But if I take it out, yeah, it got louder. We can adjust that. It's a really fun sound that helps us get some of the lighter things that we're playing to the forefront and kind of squeeze the top stuff and make it really punchy and in your face. If you want, maybe let's go to that like number two position here and kind of get some of that. Like kind of 90s era Vince Gill. But if I want to bang a chord out, I can get some. Gets that sort of arpeggiated picking up to the forefront as well. So that's the Dyna style. It's simple. Um, just you control the compression here. If we cranked it up, you'd hear it get really squashy. And you see the light kicking in when compression happens too. But I want to back it down. And I like to try to match my volumes, but maybe have the compression a little louder because I can use it as a lead boost too. So if you're playing primarily clean and need to cut with the band a little bit, a compressor can be your friend. And that's sort of, I think, what draws guitar players to them for the most part when they want to add something like this to their existing rig. Now, if I throw the switch here in comp one, I'm still there. I'm going to access the LA-2A style compressor, and that is probably my favorite of all really, you know, musical compressors. It doesn't sound like it's on all that much, which is really nice. And you can see the light flashing too. That's telling me the compression is engaged. And like the original model, there was no attack time feature on it. There was only um, your reduction and your gain control, which is kind of like here on your compression and your output. But they've actually allowed you to kind of mess with the ratio here. We're on a four to one ratio. And then I've adjusted the release time the way I want it. And you can see when it goes back to green, it means the compressor's de-engaging. If I turn it up, that light duration will change. You see it's turned up, the, link, the light is blinking off because that release time is fast. So a cool extra feature to a really usable compressor. And you can see I can turn it up a lot more than the Dynacomp style. I can get some... So it brings my notes to the forefront. Yeah. Doesn't sound like there's compression on. When I take it off, so I'll use compression in the studio and live occasionally to just make me jump out a little bit more. It can be tricky, but you want to be able to learn how to do it judiciously, and it's going to really bring your guitar sound to a different place. So what I did here was I clicked on compressor two. I'm using the 1176 style compression. It's a faster compressor, so it's gonna grab your notes uh, in a different way. It's gonna latch onto them a little faster, yet it also lets all the transients of your notes come through, and you can do that with the attack and release controls as well. Really, really important stuff. You can also adjust the ratio of that, so it's more of like a full-fledged version of an 1176 in the compressor pedal now. So I've adjusted the attack and release times in such a way that when I play, <laughs> It's not going to sound like there's very much compression going. There's a really fast attack and a fast release. And the manual mentions that you want to turn those clockwise to get both. And that's a good trick to not sound like you have too much compression happening. Fast attack is good. It lets the transients come through, like your pick attack, all that stuff that makes it sound really natural. As I move the release knob back, you'll, hear, you'll see that orange light hangs out a little bit longer. That means it's holding the compression and holding the notes more. Yeah, so you can play around with that to get your desired effect, but the 1176 style is so musical as well that it's not going to be too obtrusive. And of course, we can fully adjust our, um, our ratio here on the knob. Basically, the higher the number, the more aggressive, aggression, the aggressive 
the compression is? Aggressive compression, hard to say. But it has this cool function, you can turn it off. And that's a studio trick that I've been, you know, sort of educated on where sometimes people just like the sound of that compressor in their chain. When you do a lot of recording and mixing, you'll notice that if you engage one of those products on your signal of whatever you're using, it actually does something. It brings some character and some harmonics sometimes. So they give you that option as well. But what's cool is I could go from comp one, more aggressive Dynacomp, to an 1176. I could, you know, play around with the adjustments and make one, you know, one for rhythm, one for soloing, something like that. And you notice I can toggle back and forth between those switches. I can get into the app, which we'll do in a second, and we can go under the hood and change the, you know, the, the direction of those knobs or those switches, whether we want them to all be on, whether we want the, par uh, the, the parallel, the compression to be parallel, or we want the compression to be in series. And that all brings up a bunch of different stuff as well. So we're gonna dive into that, and we're also gonna play some sounds that I got in the track. So let's do that. So I pulled the app up and I wanna show you guys a couple things. You can change the switch orientation of the pedal. So you can have both compressors running together in series. You can go to the parallel function. So they're running side by side, that's cool. And you can also do exclusive. So that means when I hit the switches that um, you know I have either one or two engaged, not one at any, not, you can't have both of them at the same time at that point. But being that the 610 preamp and the compressor all kind of work together, essentially like a little channel strip before your guitar chain, you can do some things that are attached to the 610 you know, world, which is basically adjust the low EQ or the high EQ, plus or minus six, and then you can go plus three, plus six on the high EQ. You can also do a side chain bass filter, really, really cool stuff you can do. But if I show you, check this out, I'll go to compressor one. This should be our Dyna. Now check this out. Play, when I play those low notes, here is the low EQ down, about 6 dB. And then back up. Pulling that low end frequency down tightens the bass. The little things matter, and UA usually thinks of that, which is cool. So it's nice to be able to do that and put it in that pedal. I even adjusted it a little bit when Pete played bass for me because I didn't want his low end to get out of hand. So you can definitely get in there and make those adjustments. So some slide players actually prefer to use compression in their rigs because they might be going for like a cleaner sound and not getting the natural compression from their amplifier or an overdrive pedal. And I'm taking this sort of Lowell George approach where I'm using two 1176s. I'm gonna run them in series so one's gonna feed into another and we're gonna get a, you know, hopefully a nice, clean, sustained slide tone. I'm gonna use my water slide Cooter Caster here. Fun guitar made in the image of Rye Cooter's instruments. Um, it's got the lap steel pickup in the bridge and the gold foil low output pickup here. Got some flat wounds. I got it tuned mostly standard. The high E string is down to D. So I can get some like, you know, quasi open G stuff. Fun, right? So if I add both compressors, I get some nice sustain where I didn't have it before. And I won't get that as much. Yeah, so that's a good way to kind of get the most out of your slide playing on these cleaner tones. Yeah, good stuff, that's how you do it. So you have to get in and adjust the pedal so that both of these switches are on in series. And don't forget you select your compressor control and then adjust which one that you're on. And it'll keep it in the pedal there for you and then you can adjust whatever else you want accordingly. It's lots of fun, I encourage you to do it. If you haven't played slide with a compressor, give it a shot. So I decided to bring a real bass player into the studio today. This is my friend Pete Sternberg. Thanks for being here, Pete. Thanks, Ben. Pete, you play with the legendary country rock legendary. duo, <laughs> Brothers Osborne. Yeah. They're legends in my mind. We've actually been on the road together some too. We played some gigs and, uh, you know, 
Maybe we'll do some more of that someday. That's why oh, I had to bring yeah. him here. Love his playing, and he gets great sounds. And we're going to talk about some compression stuff and compression for bass players. So mm -hmm. when it comes to bass and compression, you like the less is more approach. For sure. Yeah, I'm definitely not trying to overdo it with too much tone shaping. Um, if anything, I'm just trying to you know tighten up my sound and also control you know any dynamic range if I get a little too excited while I'm playing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that doesn't happen much. Yeah. But like on the track we were playing, if you were, can you play that little line? This is the 1176 style that I dialed up for him. Nice. So when he does that like little plucky stuff, it pulls that more to the front and it also controls it as well. Is that kind of what you're looking for? That's how I'm thinking of it for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. What we did was, you didn't know this, but I actually switched between two compressors during the track and when he plays a little solo bit, I switched from the LA-2A to the 1176. So there are just a little bit of different subtle changes to his bass tone. Um, but good experience so far with this pedal? Yeah, man, fun? sounds great. Yeah. So. That's the deal. Maybe Pete will get one. We don't know. <laughs> so that's it. That's the Max from Universal Audio. I hope you understood how we got some of those tones using compressors and how they can actually add to your guitar signal chain. UA did a great job with this one, adding stuff that's not typical to compressor pedals. I always like that they're doing that sort of thing by pushing the envelope a little bit and trying to create something that you don't have on your pedal board. Don't forget the links to all the gear below. You can learn more about this stuff, even more than I talked about. And you can also get that discount for 40% off of my ebook, The Arpeggio Handbook for Blues Guitar. I like to do these demos as teachable moments, so if you guys are really getting something from the videos, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, hit the like button. It really helps the channel out and allows me to keep bringing gear and gear demos to you guys. That was definitely a fun one. I had a good time putting this track together, bringing my friend Pete in, trying to expand a little bit, you know, bring some folks in that you haven't seen, get some conversations happening. Maybe we'll keep doing that with more great products and lessons. And until then, I'll see you next time.